What does it take to make workshops work? How can we facilitate collaboration that sticks and actually leads to results? My name is Miriam Hapness, and it is my mission to help you to make workshops work. Today with me on the show is Mireille Böhmer, and we are talking about workshop facilitation and the nitty gritty parts of documentation of the results and actually assuring and facilitating the follow up. So stay tuned. Hello, Mireille. Hey, Miriam. Happy to have you here today mm. on the couch me in Amsterdam also. <laughs> to talk about workshop facilitation and mainly about how to follow up. Yeah, what's going next after your session? Yeah, the nitty gritty part, the most difficult part, I guess. Mm -hmm. So before we get there, maybe you can just introduce yourself and tell us, when did you start calling yourself a facilitator? Oh, that's a good question. To be honest, I started my own business, I think, five years ago. Mm -hmm. And when I started it, I was thinking by myself, where am I from? What's my business? Mm -hmm. And I just look back to all the activities I've done. And I just saw I always was the facilitator with people with different experiences. Mm -hmm. I bring them together sharing their minds, making together new products, sharing their knowledge. Mm -hmm. But I didn't call me myself a facilitator. I was always the project leader or the coordinator or the process manager mm -hmm. or the team leader. And I thought, no, I don't want to have the name team leader uh, with my own business. Mm -hmm. So I came up with the word facilitator. And even it's in the Netherlands that a facilitator is just a little bit a starting job. Mm. When you compare it to America or something else there, it's it's much more a bigger word. And then everybody knows what a facilitator is and yeah. what he or she is doing. And I'm still a little bit searching on a good word or an explanation of facilitator. Because mm -hmm. some people asking, what's a facilitator doing? And I just was wondering with myself, I really love the most bringing people together, having mm. them interaction, having them sharing their knowledge And that's the work a facilitator does. Mm, to make this collaboration easy. Yeah. <laughs> so according to you, what's the difference between a facilitator and a coach? Hmm, that's a good question. One thing what's in common, because a coach and a facilitator believes that people have the knowledge in themselves. Mm -hmm. And a coach and a facilitator is bringing it out mm -hmm. and sharing it. And I think a coach is more specific for a person and a facilitator is more for bringing team members together. Mm -hmm. And maybe a coach is also more reflecting on what you as a per person are doing and thinking. Mm -hmm. And a facilitator feels for me also sharing your knowledge mm -hmm. with transferring knowledge mm -hmm. from one people to another, one person to another. While you were speaking, I also had the impression that the facilitators may be more in charge of the process, whereas the coach is more in charge of this personal development yeah. part. Yeah, but you have also, of, of course, business coaches or, mm. or coaches for specific subjects. True. But I, I think a coach is, is a more reflecting on the personal part and a facilitator is more the sharing, mm. the sharing, the, the transferring of the knowledge yeah. between two people. And you have a background in engineering. <laughs> yeah. That's fascinating. <laughs> I love the brains of engineers. I have to admit it. So in my next life, I definitely become an engineer <laughs> or programmer. You would love to. <laughs> <laughs> so what have you learned? Or how do you think does your background in engineering, your engineer's brain impact the way you facilitate collaboration? Yeah, it's a funny question because one of my coaches asked me, I think a year ago or two years ago, what does your client doesn't know of you mm. and that's exactly my technical background oh, really? <laughs> she, she was spot on with with her question and that keeps me also thinking what have i learned in my technical background which i used a lot mm -hmm. and that is my analytical thinking uh, my structure mm -hmm. my uh, structured subjects just knowing what is important and what is less important mm -hmm. but also combining analyzing what's happening Just seeing the results, combining that with something what already happened and making a new thing on, on, from all the knowledge which is laying on the table or, or is shared between team members. So it's the 
analytical thinking, the structural thinking, and also being very practical. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a civil engineer, so <laughs> that, that's a word of about roads and bridges. Mm-hmm. And that's very practical <laughs> yeah. because a road is laying over there uh, and it has to be built and it has to be calculated. So it's very practical. You see what you get. You're making a road from A to B. And that's exactly what you do in a workshop, right? You build yeah. bridges between people and you build roads between ideas. Yes, that's totally right. Yeah. Somebody also called me a bridging builder or, or builder bridging. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So if you had to summarize everything that you do and that you stand for under one hashtag, <laughs> what would you be? My hashtag for uh, for doing my work is hashtag attention. Mm-hmm. Can I make two <laughs> two hashtags? Sure. <laughs> and also the hashtag bring power to your meeting. Mm. And hashtag attention is what I try to express in my facilitation is having attention for people. It's not about exercises you give people or ask people to do. It's more about to be sure everybody is seen, mm-hmm. everybody's heard, everybody has the possibility to share People are listening to each other. That's the most important part of facilitation. Mm -hmm. Giving people attention and be sure that everybody is seen. And the hashtag bring power to your meeting is more about power. It's not about saying you have to do this or saying you have to do that. My power is more like energy. Mm. So how do you keep people energized and having interacted with each other? So that you be sure that people feel energized and want Mm -hmm. to interact together and want to have fun together. So how would you do that? What's your favorite exercise to get Um, power to the meeting? (laughs) Always when I start a a meeting, when I facilitate a meeting, the room is totally empty. All tables, all all chairs are are, are gone or or standing not in the middle. Mm -hmm. The, The room is mostly empty. I, most of the time, I'd, I started with a matrix on the ground. Mm-hmm. I just make a cross and I just uh, ask people, do you like this meeting? Uh, then you stand over there when you don't like this meeting. Then you're standing over there, the, the other side of the first line. And the other line is, my head is full of thoughts, what I still have to do. Or I'm mm-hmm. a totally open mind. I have a totally open mind. So you have four corners where people can stand. Mm-hmm. And then you can see... A little bit how people are thinking, how they are feeling. Mm-hmm. It's a combination of an, an check-in mm-hmm. and an exercise in the room. Yeah. Uh, and you see very soon how people feel, how they are thinking, what's in their mind, if they are open, mm-hmm. if their mind is somewhere else, if they feel creative or not. I can imagine that the strength or the beauty of this exercise as opposed to a normal regular check-in where everyone would state the same is that they can also see the relation to each other so they're not alone with their feelings maybe they're not the only ones who have their minds still elsewhere yeah and this might help them to ground better and to yeah. arrive in the space. Yeah, I, I, I learned this exercise from somebody else. And when I did it myself, when I was a participant, I exactly feel what you described. Mm. Because you are seeing, oh, I'm not the only one with my thoughts, with all the activities I still have to do with in my checklist, mm-hmm. what I still have to do, my action list. And that's okay. Yeah. Because there are more people with busy minds mm. and it's very nice to know that you're not alone with that. Yeah. That there are other people who are also, oh, I've also a busy mind, but that's okay. Yeah. It will change during during the day or, or during the morning. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, of yeah. course. But it's allowed to be there. Mm. And that's that's the feeling I had when I was a participant and I... Um, uh, somebody facilitate this exercise for me when I was a participant. Mm. I felt I was seen also. And what I also like is that it gives you permission to articulate that you actually don't want to be there. Yeah. 
So you have the option. It is there. You can stand there and that's okay. That's okay. So you don't have to pretend that it's all, oh, we're having a workshop and I'm all excited. No, I have work to do and actually don't want to be here. And then once you see it, it's there, you can address it. Yeah. So how would you go about the situation where maybe a few too many people stand in the quadrant <laughs> that they don't actually want to don't want to be there and have a busy mind? Yeah, that's always the, a, a difficult part because that's also one of the questions I get the most. How do we, how do I deal with difficult situation mm -hmm. like a situation as you described? And I think two things. One is to allow and to have giving people permission that, that it is okay. And also to say to those people, those participants, if you need some time for yourself, mm -hmm. please take it. If you need time to make a call or to write an email about an hour or during the break, it's okay, mm -hmm. do it. Because then it's hopefully your mind is cleared and then you can be in the room with your full attention. Yeah. So when you know that people have busy minds as a facilitator, then you can make space for it. Yeah. And you can ask people what they need with fully intention over mm -hmm. there. I do see a trade-off there that, and maybe I got you wrong, if I allow the participants to then leave the meeting for an hour or so to do their work and then they come back later, yeah. how do you then get to integrate them and to get them on speed without disturbing the other participants? Yeah, it's the same when people are coming too late mm -hmm. in your session. That also could happen. Do you uh, allow that? Yeah, I allowed it and I always try to make time to have a little chat together with that late coming participant. Mm -hmm. Just to say, we have done this, we've done that. This is the result of the first action. This is the result of the second activity. Mm -hmm. So we are now over here. So please come in. You're welcome. Uh, just listen to what everybody has to say and then step in the process. Mm -hmm. And it's also about hashtag giving attention. When you give attention to somebody who's come late, then he f or she f feels that she's also welcome. Mm. And then you have also the respect of the participant that she's just coming in very quiet and not just, oh, I'm not, 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 not don't agree with what's happening now, mm. but she knows or he knows what's going on, where the process is, and then just can smooth uh, flowing with the w w with the whole process. Mm. Interesting. Because <laughs> I just had a, an interview with Pam Hamilton, and she's on the other side and says that she wouldn't allow anyone to come in late yeah. or to just come in to, she calls them floaters, to just observe because she's very clear that this will might disturb the process of the other group. So I'm glad to have Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I, I had it once with the training, and I knew it on forehand before, mm -hmm. that somebody was coming in on, on one hour late. And I also discussed it on forehand with the participants. Mm -hmm. There will be somebody who's coming at 10 o'clock. We started at nine. And I also explained what I will do with the new participants. Mm. So it's when you just incorporate it in, in the process. Yeah. And when you know that somebody is coming late, then you then you have space mm -hmm. also for, for that. And the yeah. participants just know, okay, somebody is stepping in. We are not surprised about it. Mm -hmm. We know it. So that's okay. Yeah. Then it's different. And you can manage the expectations and yeah. prepare everyone. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and then it's it it was for this example. It was totally okay mm -hmm. because everybody okay. We know we we knew there's somebody coming in on ten o'clock. Yeah. So that's 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 perfect. When you train facilitators and mm -hmm. you do a lot of trainings recently, what are the key skills that you would emphasize to become a professional facilitator? Preparation. Yeah, mm -hmm. and another part and another subject. Uh, you as a facilitator. Mm -hmm. To start with the, the second one, so many people ask me, do you know an exercise for 
an energizer or uh, having consensus or something else. And there are a lot of exercises. Mm -hmm. you, you can search for books or on the internet and you found so many exercises. But I really believe it's also all about you as a facilitator. Mm -hmm. And when two different facilitators uh, just use the same exercise the session will be totally different. Yes. And yes. Uh, even if it's exactly the same exercise, mm -hmm. it's more about how you explain the exercise, how you have attention for all the people, what you were doing before and after that exercise, mm. what you're doing with you see somebody face when somebody says, oh, I don't want it. When you see that at, at his or her face, How do you deal with that as mm -hmm. a facilitator? And it's all about how are the team members or the participants listening to each other? Mm -hmm. And uh, do you make space for listening? A lot of people listen to each other with the aim to say something. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not listening. <laughs> yeah. that, that's just, I want to say something. But I know, don't listen what you are saying. Yeah. Because I want to say, I, I want to, to tell my own opinion. And that's that's totally different. And as a facilitator, you have to be aware of the of such mm -hmm. a process. So that's more important than exercises. You as a, than than activities. You as a facilitator. Yeah. And then I hear a lot of also maturity and self confidence in what you say because to make participants aware that they're actually not listening but only waiting to contribute and to say something themselves. You need a lot of self-confidence, authority. Yeah. yeah. Once I did an exercise and I make pairs <laughs> and I just uh, say to one participant, you, you, you just tell a story where you're very proud on it. Mm -hmm. And to the other, to the other participant, I said, first you are listening with your mind. Oh, that's beautiful. That's that's fantastic. What what the other is telling. Mm -hmm. The second part you are listening with. Oh, that's stupid. That's so stupid. What she's telling. That's mm -hmm. that will not work. Mm -hmm. And the the third part you are listening with totally an open mind, just open mind, like a journalist. Yeah, like it. Yeah. And then after the exercise, we just talk about what's the difference between the three parts. Yes. And the story of the other one. It's totally the same, yeah. but you are still with your mind, another mind or another thought in your head when you just, I will say, listening with, with other ears, ears. Mm -hmm. yeah. the story you are listening to will be totally different. You hear different things. You hear different things. Yeah. yeah. And being aware of that process, which all in your mind, mm -hmm. that gives a lot of insight. It's a very, yeah. I can imagine that it's an eye-opening yeah. exercise because it happens even in everyday life, if we are biased in our mind because our mindset is just defensive, if we don't want to hear something, we, we won't. won't hear. We won't hear. That's yeah. why very often we are not open for feedback or we cannot actually communicate if emotionally we are not connected to each other because we won't hear the arguments. We're just disturbed by our emotions. Yeah. 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 And being aware of, of that really helps yeah just being imagine. aware then you can change your mindset mm. true and a facilitator really has to practice to have this open mind this journalist or researcher mindset in order not to judge or to be overly enthusiastic yeah i mm -hmm. think a facilitator it's also important for the facilitants but also being aware with your participants yes yes, yes. so having such an exercise helps people to listen to listen to each other mm. and how they are listening to each other yeah can change the entire dynamics of a team yeah I imagine totally true beautiful <laughs> thank you for sharing we decided on the topic of how to follow up yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm very i'm very curious and maybe to to start diving into this direction Maybe you can share how you document your workshop results because I guess that the that the default or the minimum would be just to have a picture 
protocol. So you take pictures of the piles of post-its and you send them to your client. <laughs> what else? <laughs> Or what other? Yeah. One of my first sessions, I walked out of the room with a lot of flip overs <laughs> on my arm. So I will work it out. And I, I, I never do it again. Only when <laughs> I think I, we when all it, started like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all started. Oh. <laughs> the yes. Yeah. When you capture all the results, it's be aware of what is, it, it's, it's, it, it sounds strange, what is said with no words. Mm. And I always try to capture uh, the words who are not, not said, which, which, is the, which, which people are thinking, but which are not written down. And that are mostly of the time are little quotes mm -hmm. or just sentences people say when they explain their, their, their post-its or the results or something else. Mm -hmm. So capturing the quotes I also have a paper, I also have a flashcard in my hands when, when I wrote down the little quotes mm -hmm. which people are saying. There's so much value in mm -hmm. that. Is it the metaphorical part or the visual part of these quotes that... More than metaphorical, the yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more than metaphorical. And would you feed this back to the group in this moment? So would you emphasize this quote yeah, to so make sure that you really understand what they mean? Yeah, sometimes I do when when the time is right and it feels right, mm -hmm. then I, uh, I give it back. And I just sometimes I'll, I also say, oh, do you remember half an hour ago you said that? And that's what we are now in trying, what now we are explaining. And it helps for people capturing and structuring their thoughts. Yeah. And and quote is very easy. And what's also important, that's the second one, not only capturing the quotes, but also making a story of it. Mm. And when you want to express or report out your results, you have also have to think for whom I'm doing it. Mm -hmm. Do I it for the manager or the other colleagues? who are not there or the stakeholders or something else. And what's the story, what I will tell to them. Mm. And just having that in your mind helps also making the story of the results. And when you say story, can you explain a little bit what you mean by that? Because when I hear story, I have a very clear concept <laughs> in my mind. And I just want to make sure that it's the same concept as you have. <laughs> Yeah, it's not only about the results, like we're having this strategy or that plan or we made that decision, but also explaining the process, mm -hmm. making that decision, but also the reason why just that result or the reason why just that mm -hmm. decision. Mm -hmm. You make a little bit when some, when an, for instance, a stakeholder or a manager know what sort of discussion has gone, uh, people have thought about what discussion, then he also understands the process and what, mm -hmm. and he also understands the result. So it's basically you would introduce the stakeholders or the different opinions, then explain what was the initial problem, then maybe the conflict of the story, the climax, the resolution. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, and just also after the insight or of what are the different opinions of it, mm -hmm. and how do we come to a consensus, or do how do we come together to a decision? Yeah. And it's quite different when you say only that's the result, that's the decision, huh. that's the plan. But knowing what other possibilities were, but they are not chosen, mm. knowing that part helps to understand why we have chosen for that decision absolutely and prevents going back yes and rediscussing opening yeah. the, the yeah. box again. totally right yeah. totally right yeah do you have a template for these kind of depends results on, stories yeah. it depends on the on the purpose stories. yesterday i had a session with a team and they had to report out their results uh, to their manager And I make a template. It's it's a famous one of a cover story. Mm -hmm. So they design together a cover story of an article. Mm -hmm. What will be there about three years. Mm. So they have to make a headline, a tweet, an interview, mm -hmm. a picture, uh, a drawing. So they it's a sort of summarize of their result. Mm. And that they use it to present on their, for the manager. So they're 
creating their own documentation of yeah. the workshop yeah. results. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's more effective than walking home with a pile of yeah. flip overs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very nice. And I think then also the client can better work with the results yeah. instead of just piles of post-its and pictures that nobody actually looks at. No, but when you have a flip over full of post-its, you just carry the, the flip over and all post-its go down and lay on the ground and <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> didn't stick anymore. So yeah. just writing down and having it and making them a self story or a template mm. and what template I use, it's quite depends on the purpose mm. of the workshop or depends yeah. on the on the on the result yeah so mainly to give the content and also the alternatives yeah yeah and also a good advice when you're just numbering your flip overs mm. so <laughs> when you look back to your flip overs a week a week later or a month later you really don't know anymore what what's the first one we did and what's the second one we did so numbering them or writing the time of the workshop in just in the corner yeah. yeah that helps <laughs> good advice yeah <laughs> practical advice very practical advice hello listener are you tired of listening to my podcast voice praising our sponsor Session Lab in each episode? I think it's time to pass the mic over to you. So if you are as much of a Session Lab fan and user as I am, please share your experience and praise and don't be shy of add a sentence of self-promo. Send me your soundbite and you might hear yourself on the next show and find your name and URL in the show notes. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And how likely is it that the teams will then really follow up on the workshop results? Because I think documentation is only one part yeah. that you need. How do you keep or what is it that helps teams to keep the momentum afterwards? First of all, I always have a talk with the client. What will be your follow up? Mm -hmm. Because follow up activities cost time, mm -hmm. space capacity and not everybody is always aware of that and it's less fun it's sometimes it's more yeah it, it's sometimes it's less fun but you can make it also fun but you have to organize it mm -hmm. and i think that mostly is forgotten mm. and that's also the hashtag attention you also need to give attention to the follow-up process just by giving people clear activities what are you doing how are you doing it what do you need can mm -hmm. i help you but also keeping the group together just having a conversation or a communication between all the different participants oh he is doing this she is doing that she has done that you can help her mm -hmm. please your results are very valuable for the other person And having a conversation or keeping everybody informed, mm -hmm. sending them an article. Look, I've, I've found this. This may be very interesting for you because you're mm -hmm. busy with those, that also. It's part of your job. And also organizing a second session for the follow-up and just discuss what did you do? How far are you? Can I help you? Mm -hmm. Are there new questions? Do we have to discuss something new? So... My best advice is organize also the follow the follow up with the facilitator, or can it be facilitated by the team itself? Yeah, sometimes it can be facilitated by the by the manager. Sometimes an external person can do it. Mm -hmm. The facilitator can do it also. Most of the time, the manager do it by himself or one of the team members. Yeah. And what would be the sweet spot in terms of timing? Is it a week after? Two weeks after? Depends a little a bit days. on yeah. It depends a little bit on the activities when when somebody has to really realize something or to make something. Mm -hmm. Then a week is too too short. Mm -hmm. Then take a month or okay. just just such a timeline. And when you say that it's important to plan it, would you then discuss or work out this process of following up with the client beforehand as part of the workshop? Yeah. I really Perfect. love to, yeah, because one of the, you as a facilitator, uh, you also have to take your time, your closure of your first session. Mm -hmm. Sometimes 
you run out of time. And then what happens? The closure is, okay, these are results. I will give it to the manager and thank you for your for being there. Mm-hmm. And that's it. But that's like an open ending of your session. Yeah. So when you're designing your session, please make time for your closure. Don't rush. Yeah. It's like having your last sip of your coffee and scold. Then you, <laughs> then you think, ah, <laughs> mm. that's not nice because you and you forget how nice the coffee was. The whole warm cup of coffee. So nice picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, t- take time of your closing and just end positive. Just say, look back with the participants. We have done this. We have done that. We have done that activity with that result. And we did together, we do this process, this process, and that process. And you all participate. So just mention the positive results Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the meeting. And also ask, are there any burning questions? Mm -hmm. Or don't we discuss something? Or Mm -hmm. did we miss something? Do we have to bring it back on another time or another meeting or something else? And also when you discussed subjects or subjects you don't discuss, just make an appointment. Okay, that's how we are going to do it uh, with that uh, with that uh, subject. Mm. How much time would you plan for such a closing? For instance, for fa- four hours, 20 minutes. So usually what I do when I realize that I'm running out of time, I would ask the participants, okay, so who has a clear cut who needs to leave yeah. or can we have 15 minutes maybe longer i don't like to take more time i think it's important to also have them trust the next time that a timing is a timing and will finish as planned but then at one point you need to save this time yeah. so would you then rather cut short an exercise that you were doing before in order to have these 20 minutes? Yeah. How do you? Yeah, exactly what you say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I prefer to spare time for the closure and to cut an activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because not closure feels like I'm rushing. Yeah. How do your clients react to that or the sponsor of the meeting? (laughs) I also mention it. I just say it also mm-hmm. because there's also a reason when I, the time is over. There's a reason because a special discussion takes more time than just a thought. Yeah. And I just say, okay, this one, this part, this activity will cost more time. It's okay for you but the, because the consequence is that we don't do that activity. Beca- and I also want to have time for the closure yeah. and looking back together. And just also have a discussion about what could we do better the next time? Mm -hmm. Or uh, what was a good part? What do we have to do next time again? Mm -hmm. So looking back together is also so valuable because they know, okay, when we have a next session, we know we must, for instance, have more time for discussing Mm -hmm. or we have more time for our check-in. Or we need more time for making our results, writing them down, making the template, for instance. Yeah. And every group, every team is different. Would you use the same concept, these quadrants for the checkout as you use for the check-in? <laughs> <laughs> I never did. But it's funny because some weeks ago, a participant also uh, mentioned that. Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, I, I did it before an exercise and I did it after an exercise. Mm-hmm. Just... Just knowing how changed everybody's mind. Yeah. 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 And maybe even with different quadrants asking, okay, did you feel that we achieved our expectations or is there still something open? How confused do you feel? Yeah. Yeah. Something like that yeah. could be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very. Yeah. And that's also a part of, of, of my evaluation. We did was our purpose. Mm-hmm. That is what we're supposed to do. Did we reach that purpose, that goal? Did we do something else? Yeah. S- sometimes happens. Uh, was it worthful? Do we need to plan another meeting for the purpose, uh, the, the, the original purpose? Mm-hmm. So just having a talk about that. It's about your evaluation. Also for yourself. Yes. For me as a facilitator, can I do something else next time? Mm-hmm. And if so, what? Yeah. Uh, do I have to prepare on another way? Or do I have to... 
have another intake with the client or another intake, another sort of intake with the participants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think are the the boxes that you need to check at the end of a workshop to make sure that the follow up is secured and becomes easy? I think that the results have to be clear for all participants and also the appointments you make. Mm -hmm. When there are follow-up actions, also discuss how the action looks like when it's done. Mm -hmm. Because when I say to you, for, for instance, I will make a new plan about something. And my ideas of a plan, it will be a plan on both activities and the planning and Time maybe the timeline and budgets. Mm -hmm. And another participant has an idea, ah, it's a plan, it's just a, a, a sketch mm -hmm. of a product. <laughs> or, and another one is thinking, oh, we just do a benchmarking of the plan, of the product. Yeah. So discuss how will it look like when it's finished, mm -hmm. when it's done. Yeah. And also just discuss the timelines, when it will be done and uh, who's responsible. And that doesn't mean that that person who's responsible needs to do all the work, but who's responsible, who, who's the leader? of the, the activities yeah. and who's involved that simple part needs to be clear mm -hmm. it's, it's so many times participants walked out the meeting and just ah oh, we just made a strategy <laughs> point <laughs> <laughs> and then i have a talk afterwards with the manager and i said how do you giving a follow-up oh yeah 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 i don't know i don't know how, how should i do it i think oh That's a missing part in the session. Because when you just make an appointment with the participants, that's the way how we follow up. Mm -hmm. And that's how you will be involved. And that's what we are doing mm -hmm. the next week or the next month. Then they're more engaged with the subject. And when they just walk away and just only thought, oh, we make a strategy. That's it. They don't understand their role. They don't understand the timeline. They don't understand the time. The and they're not, oh, we, we, yeah. we, we spent a half day on this workshop. And is it worth? We, yeah. we don't know. Especially if it's then so difficult to really monitor the progress also of the Yeah, the be, because also monitoring takes time. And, yeah. and not doing it, then will you lose all the momentum. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that's, that's when you lose the momentum, then, then you lose also the participants. Yeah. What is your responsibility as a facilitator to make the follow-up easy, to facilitate the follow-up or to really monitor in order to prevent? So where's the limitation mm. for a project manager? Yeah, that's a difficult question because it also depends a little bit on what the client wants. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you only get the question, please facilitate this session. Mm -hmm. And uh, then the client don't speak about following up or saying, I will do the follow up. Mm -hmm. and that's it. But I really love to be also part of the follow up mm -hmm. because you're working with the participants during the session. You're making some results. Then you want to bring it to an end. And you want to know how it continues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and during the session, you are seeing so much interaction and energy between the participants and you don't want to blow that away you don't mm -hmm. want to to like like a little balloon and, and it's flow flow away and it's gone yeah then if so you do the session for nothing mm -hmm. so w how would you see your role then as a facilitator in this follow-up process just making clear the, the, making clear what what the expectations are for the mm -hmm. follow-up and to discuss it on forehand with the client yeah Just make also appointments with the clients. Mm -hmm. This is how, what the results will be. We, have, we, we end with a timeline. We end with real description of the activities. Mm -hmm. And I know sometimes it could be very difficult when even if you have a session for, for instance, four hours and, and you want to, people have a check-in, being familiar with the subject, let them interact Let them have brainstorming and having a discussion. Yeah, you, <laughs> and, you start and, and, yeah. you start laughing. It's too yeah. much for four hours. Yes. Yes. So be honest of what's possible, yeah. and then you have to divide it in in two session or sessions or or just saying, okay, this is the first session, this is the second session, and maybe that's the third session. 
I realized that it's the second time that you mentioned the four hour workshop or meeting. Do you believe in eight hour workshops? Mm. When you have an eight hour workshop as a facilitator, you must be aware about the energy of the participants during the whole day. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe in energizers. For instance, <laughs> after the lunch, I do an, an energizer where people get moving. And of course, getting outside and having a walk, that's okay. Mm -hmm. But like moving, clapping in your hands and turning around and stamp with your feet. <laughs> If you need that, y your, your design is not good enough. Uh, <laughs> that, that's I, I really something I believe. And mm -hmm. having or, or, or uh, developing an eight-hour session means that you have such a different activities for your participants also with some reflecting exercises because people don't can be mm -hmm. eight hours long yeah. they eight hours interaction with each other it's too much yeah then you have so many whoa what's happening over here mm. then you have to really think about your design that people also need some time for themselves and then make a distinction between This exercise, you do it for yourself. Then you're sharing in 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 with uh, with two people. Then you're doing this in triads. Then you have your something for yourself, mm -hmm. and that's the the an eight hour session must consist of different different sort of activities. Yeah. And of course, a four hour session also, but that's because it's shorter. It's okay. Yeah, interesting because I. I really struggle. On the one hand, I, I often do long workshops, full day workshops. And I realized that the time after lunch is really difficult to keep the energy and the focus up. And it's funny enough, it's usually it's not directly after lunch because when the participants come back directly after lunch, they are still on. But then one hour later. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, then usually the M&M consumption in my workshops <laughs> peaks yeah around Sugar. 3 p.m <laughs> yes. yeah yeah, yeah that <laughs> and, I, i recognize that and some and also at half past four people get tired yeah and then i think it's even more difficult because then everyone just wants to leave and then to really get this last energy for making a plan defining roles and responsibilities having yeah. a proper checkout yeah That's a challenge. Yeah, that's really a challenge. And maybe sometimes it, that's too much. Mm -hmm. And making activities and making and planning. And when you have a big template on the wall and you're just filling in that template, mm -hmm. then you can see the progress. Yeah. And then you have for the first part of the session, you also make appointments about activities and making a little plan. So you can also divide it in little pieces mm. if it's possible, yeah. because it's not always possible. Yeah. Possible. But what you described, having a plan at the end and making the most important decisions at mm -hmm. the end is hard. It's very hard. Yeah, if the energy is just not there anymore. Yeah. And then I guess maybe this is even one reason, and I'm thinking out loud, why the follow-up of workshop results becomes so difficult because nobody actually really remembers what has been decided at the end because yeah. they were already somewhere else yeah. mentally. Yeah, but also when you organize a follow-up, what's a, a month later, uh, have contact or have communication with the participants mm -hmm. after a week uh, mm -hmm. already. Yeah. Because otherwise then they will forget what is our, what do we have to do? Or yeah. what, oh, oh yes, what did we do? Mm, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. So the follow-up can also be very short after and mm -hmm. organizing a next session could be a month later yeah but communicate after a few days at the end of the workshop i agree keep it alive i started sending out um surveys very short surveys to mm. the participants yeah. to just say okay so this was the main outcome to what extent do you agree yeah how do you understand your role yeah and what can hold you back actually from yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and for instance, also having a little summary of what's done, send mm -hmm. it after one day or two days yeah. as soon as possible. And also with, I talked about the quotes, just keeping the memory alive, sending them the quotes or make uh, some visuals about it. And then they know, oh, it's a very short summary of it. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. that we discussed. Or make uh, a picture of, of, the, of the template with the filled-in template so that they even know, oh yeah, 
that's it. Mm. That that's what what we do. So the the follow up with the results, the written results, do it as soon as possible. Yeah, and I like the the part that you mentioned with the visualization because I can imagine or experience you send a word document. Okay, here comes the summary. Oh no! Just, exactly. <laughs> Even if it's just one page or two pages, but I think the resistance to open the word document is so large that it's easier to just read one quote or to have yeah. a look, look yeah. at the picture of a visualization. I think there is there are so many written minutes of a meeting which are never read, mm. or never have been read by anyone. Or never opened the minutes of the meeting. Yeah. And doing it very simple, like a PowerPoint. Or or maybe also a little video of, of one or two minutes. We, we did once, we asked the participants on forehand of a meeting, what do you expect? Mm -hmm. Just two sentences, maybe 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. We just filmed them at the beginning of the workshop. <sighs> and at the end of the workshop, we had a drink and a bite. We also ask the participant, please give also in two sentences, 20 minutes. What's your feeling about? What did we reach? What are the results? What are you most surprised or of the workshop? And that two together, we made a we made a short video for one or two minutes together. The idea is brilliant. Yeah, it's so easy and it's it's very easy. Yeah, and it, it's made, it, it's done by, by somebody else, somebody who's a good video editor and he did it in a couple of hours. Yeah. He just put all of it together. But we had the expectation of the people, of the participants who started mm -hmm. the, on the beginning of the workshop. And we had a summary of the results in the words saying by the participants yeah. at the end of the workshop. And you captured the energy. So if the participants look watch it again then they remember how they felt in this moment so they will yeah. feel motivated to yeah. follow up yeah because we we capture it when they are full in in the yeah, energy exactly. of the workshop and then it's also a little bit of peer pressure because they are stating what they believe has been reached and should be yeah done afterwards so everyone can watch it and just remind them didn't you say that yeah. you would do a plan <laughs> yeah it, it was wonderful so mm -hmm. think about the way you capture the, the results a quote a visual a video uh, pictures also pictures of the whole setting during the whole day yeah pictures of the different activities mm. when people are oh yes then i was with that colleague and that colleague and then we were working together mm. when i see the picture When mm. I see the table on that part of the room, then they remember what they were doing. Yeah. And, and when they mm -hmm. see the picture of themselves in the other part of the room with another template or with another colleague, then, oh, yes, then I was doing that. True. And we remember this better because we attach emotions to it than just yeah. the post-it notes or the yeah. summary quadrants. Yeah. So make more of your follow-up or your, or your capturing of the results Not by only a, a picture of the flip overs, but make more of it. Yeah, other visual. Yeah, and that's why I also mentioned the story. Mm -hmm. It's the story of uh, of all the different parts of the session. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I will try that out next time. Awesome. And we've been talking for almost an hour. Really? Yeah. From your experience, what makes a workshop fail? No collaboration. No interaction. Mm -hmm. People who don't dare to something, to say something, mm -hmm. and sitting, sitting on the chair, <laughs> <laughs> even if it's in the circle. Even if it's in the circle. <laughs> Last week I had a session, and one of the participants asked me during the morning, "Please, can we sit for for a minute?" <laughs> <laughs> and of course he would. Of course he was allowed to sit, but we are so active and. Just moving in the room <laughs> that they don't sit. But they, <laughs> they, at the end, of, like about a couple of hours, they were so tired. <laughs> so if teams book you for workshops, they don't need a gym membership anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and they have to don't wear high heels. <laughs> wear sneakers. Yeah, wear and sneakers. cancel your gym membership. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> if someone fell asleep after our first minute and just woke up and doesn't have time to listen to our conversation again, what wouldn't you like this person to remember? 
give attention to people and how important it is seeing everybody in the room. Thank you. If now someone wants to learn more from you to be trained as a facilitator or to book you as a facilitator in order to become more fit, <laughs> <laughs> fit in collaboration, yeah. and fit physically, how can they find you? They find me on my website, mirajebomer.nl. And there is all the, and I use, you also find me on LinkedIn, where I post a lot, a lot of blogs, a lot of posts, a lot of information. I share a lot of my knowledge. She does. <laughs> If you speak just a little bit of Dutch, sign up for her newsletter. It's great. It's in Dutch, yes. yes. <laughs> I use it as my Dutch lesson. <laughs> But it's nice to hear. Yeah, always good to practice. And it's definitely worth the effort. So the content you provide. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Miriam. It was a pleasure to talk to you and learn from you. For me also. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you for staying tuned and listening to the show. I appreciate your attention as I know how busy you are. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and engage by sharing your comments and thoughts and visit workshops.work to download the one-page summary. I'm looking forward to seeing you back at the next episode and I wish you a fruitful day. Thank <laughs> you.